You know, when this game started tonight, I wasn't sure I was going to have anything to talk about. I kind of figured with Tyrese Halliburton going down that the uh, Boston Celtics were just going to steamroll the Indiana Pacers tonight. But then the Indiana Pacers decided, nope, we're going to play super inspired and not miss any jump shots ever again, because that's just what they're capable of doing sometimes. And they just went on an absolute tear in the first quarter. But as you can see by this final score here, the Boston Celtics ended up coming back. So look at this. We do have something to talk about. How interesting. And we'll get to those final plays or whatever, but I kind of want to talk about everybody before getting to this point. Um, I thought Jalen Brown had a really, really good basketball game. I know he wasn't very efficient from three, but I thought he attacked the rim and he stayed very aggressive. And we'll say like, yeah, he took a couple of layups that he didn't need to take or whatever. But we also like to criticize people whenever they don't uh, or whenever the stars don't be aggressive and everything. So you're either wanting them to be aggressive or you're not. It's not like bam, 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 like it's either one or the other. Uh, Jason Tatum was absolutely phenomenal in this game. Um, I always compare Jason Tatum, and you, you guys have either heard this from me or you haven't at this point. Um, I compare him to Paul George more than anybody else. I feel like he's a new Paul George, and what I mean by that is he can just do whatever the team needs him to do. Tonight, he was able to be a scorer, rebounder, passer, defender, literally everything. One of the things that's so interesting about like his offensive game is his ability to ability to draw fouls he's really good at like bumping people really hard a couple times because he's really big and strong and then when they try to bump him back that's when he really like goes in and kind of like goes up into you um it's a really tough thing because you have to start standing your ground at some point when he bumps you hard the first like one or two times and it's just that's just going to be a hard thing for people to time out this this right here is the difference though al horford seven for 12 from three uh in game one took a lot of three pointers they left him open in the corner um this in the game two they moved him out of the corner because he didn't hit too many of them said he wouldn't have to be in that opportunity anymore and a better three-point shooter could be there this time the pick and fade with al horford very effective so for whatever reason he just doesn't like to catch and shoot he likes to catch the little lob pass over so we learned something about him today while Derek white wasn't as effective today and neither was maybe drew holiday uh in terms of just like offensive production apparently drew was a little bit sick or whatever uh both these guys still phenomenal defensive players um the concern obviously came from the bench no luke cornett tonight which was a big loss for them but that's why i thought the uh xavier tillman trade was such a big deal when it happened at the deadline i had a lot of people being like oh why, why was this trade like something i'm like no like this could like if something happens like what we saw tonight xavier tillman can come in and be a respectable nba player and just be big and physical and hey he got one of the three bench points scored in the game was it three or was it four is four excuse me and his i mean his two his one point two points came at the like end of the third quarter like that's how long we had without bench scoring and like there's this is a talented enough uh nba bench for the most part it's not like maybe the best looking thing on paper but i'm, I'm not too worried about it um uh, the o'shea Brissett minutes are kind of interesting um I, I like his defense and intensity out there but anyway um i'm not too worried about it i think they'll be better next game i'm just i'm sure they will be right i'm obviously they didn't get to play as much in the second half because they had to use the starters to fight their way back uh after being down 18 points the indiana pacers then yeah like i said started out really really hot they finished off not shooting the ball very well from three um i can't believe miles turner didn't hit a three i feel like he hit so many shots on that let's start out with miles turner miles turner was really really good tonight all said and done um Definitely took a couple shots that he shouldn't have. Got a little too physical at certain points when he didn't need to. But, like, he's so skilled, man. Like, his ability to put the ball on the floor when he needs to elevates quickly. Like, he's just, like, super smart, too. Like, I, I really like that the Indiana Pacers, um, and I know I'm complimenting the team that lost a lot right now, and we'll talk about the end of the game and where it kind of fell apart, especially in the third quarter. But, like, I just love how they recognize all the little things on offense. And that's part of the reason why their offense is so good is because they do all the little things correctly. Like, when I Miles Turner has a mismatch on him. They all look and they go, oh, our seven foot guy has a six, six guy on him. Let's pass him the ball and let him do something right like that. I just it makes me so happy because most NBA teams like do a poor job of recognizing that nowadays. And I think basketball is going in a weird direction where a lot of those simple things are starting to like be missed. And that just bothers me a little bit. Um, Andrew Nemhard, let's talk about him really quick. Phenomenal, phenomenal basketball game from the young guy. Um, so this is what I this is what I picture with Andrew Nemhard right now. Is he the next like Dennis? Schroeder. I know they're they're different play types, right? They're both very good at like uh getting to the rim and like being quick and strong and finishing around there. I'm not trying to like compare their play styles. 
too much, but is he going to be the next, like, really good backup point guard? Because you remember Schroeder came in as a young guy with Atlanta, and people were all like, oh, wow, this this is a young stud behind Jeff Teague or whatever. Like, is Andrew Nemhard going to be that guy that, like, we keep seeing stuff from, and then somebody's going to try to make him a starting point guard, and he's not going to be able to do it? Like, and he's just always going to be, like, a really good backup, and that's what he's supposed to do? That's kind of what I feel feel like is going to happen with Nemhard. He's still too young in his career to know, but that's just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, uh, Aaron Neesmith wasn't too effective out there today, like played good defense. So I give him credit for that because uh, uh, he was probably the only one in the third quarter that wasn't playing uh, kind of rough defense for the Pacers. They just seem to kind of mess up a lot of their assignments there. Uh, Spicy P really, really effective. Uh, when he got the ball, good things happened. Shout out Spicy P. Ben Shepard, shout out the rookie, man. Um, both him and Andrew Nemhart are nice young players for these guys. Here's my Ben Shepard compliment, and I know he didn't score any points or anything in this game, and that's tough out of you're starting to guard um young guy and it's really impressive to me how much he doesn't force any problems on um on the pacers what, what do i mean by that when he catches the ball he looks to either make a move or he's like okay nope i'm not gonna force this i'm gonna get the ball back to like the good players on the team and like not to say he's not a good player but like you know what i'm saying like Nemhard, uh siakam halliburton if he was in like that's something i've seen a lot from him and i i was critical of Carlisle at first for playing Ben Shepard and I was like you should play Doug McDermott more and I still think they should probably play Doug McDermott at least like some minutes I think he'd probably be helpful I mean maybe not their offense is fine without it they just kind of went cold for a little bit there but um a lot of cr credit to Ben Shepard and I can see why Carlisle likes him so much just a very very smart basketball player so can't wait to can't wait to see more of him uh Obi uh played really well TJ McConnell's an absolute monster uh maybe my favorite player left in the playoffs at this point he's a monster uh, Isaiah Jackson missed a couple of easy ones tonight, and that's unfortunate. I'm sure uh, that's going to haunt him a little bit tonight, but otherwise, like, another pretty nice game energy-wise for him, so shout out him. But let's talk about those last couple possessions or whatever. Obviously, the third quarter happened. Indiana went just, like, ice cold, and the Boston Celtics got really, really hot, right? Uh, primarily Jason Tatum finding people open for three. Uh, what'd they finish? They finished 35%, pretty solid overall, And but yeah, no, the Indiana Pacers just went ice cold. They were kind of keeping the Celtics Celtics at bay then for kind of like the last like four minutes of this game and then it got real close again Jason Tatum makes that crazy drive and behind the back pass one bounce to Al Horford in the corner who just ma makes it rain absolutely crazy right um let's talk about that Nemhard one where he um because who was it was it uh Tatum that went to the hoop and there was a no call uh Nemhard gets the rebound he's going all the way down the court right it's a four on or well, it's a five on four now in favor of Indiana and Nemhard decides to run right into Drew Holiday uh coughs up the basketball because Drew Holiday is smart and gets a nice steal on it and um nope there's no foul there I don't see any foul in that one and I will say I feel like the refs were siding with uh, Boston a little bit more. I didn't feel like they were calling a very even game. That's just my opinion. Like, it's okay to criticize refs. I know that not like legally if you're like in the NBA or whatever. That's just my observation. I didn't feel like it was a very balanced game. So you learn from it if you're a ref, right? And you move on. And maybe I'm not correct, but just my observation at the end of the day. But anyway, Nemhard bumps into Drew, gets the steal, kind of ruins the game there for them, unfortunately. Um, and I learned something about the uh, clear path call there too. I didn't realize that if you tried to evade it, it was um it doesn't it, do, it doesn't count as a clear path and drew jj reddick made a phenomenal point i know i'm getting off topic jj reddick made a phenomenal point he was like why would there even be clear path when you have to foul at the end of the game i'm like that's a really good point i've never thought about that that's kind of an odd little circumstance or whatever um but nemhard in that situation that that one hurts that's a young player mistake right there he was putting his head down he's trying to be great he's having the best game of his young young career he gets to be the starting point guard for a change right where halliburton is always the guy right and so he's like I'm gonna go win this game for us or whatever and I admire that like he's got a lot of dog in him for trying that but man you got to have your head up and you have to be able to count and be like well one you should have just seen Tatum like uh falling out of bounds and you know okay we got numbers I got to get this ball to like Pascal Siakam or something like that somebody's open right because somebody's right in front of me I've got to find somebody else there and it's just unfortunate that that's the mistake that was made or whatever and that 
kind of did cost them the game. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, well, I shouldn't say it cost them the game. Like the third quarter really cost them the game. It's just that it cost them the opportunity to win the game. Um, That that little uh, football play they ran there at the end was uh, kind of cool. We used to have something like that when I was in uh, college and playing or whatever. So that was uh, that was cool to see. They got a good look at it at the end. It just uh, just wasn't quite it. Just wasn't quite it. But um. Do we think that the Pacers can win the next one? I would find it hard to believe that, um, well, maybe Halliburton just says I'm getting back on the court, man, but is it really worth risking, like, the hamstring? The hamstring's a tough one, man. Like, that's a real tough one. And uh, do we see Porzingis in the next game? Do the Celtics say, like, hey, let's at least get him out there for, like, some minutes or something like that? I mean, I don't even know if he's, like, healthy or not, but, like, I thought he was supposed to be back kind of by now, so uh, I have no idea. I haven't looked into it. Don't really care to look into it right now either, but dude do you guys think that indiana can win game four i feel like this was a, as good as they can really do against the celtics i don't know and they kind of coughed it up so you guys let me know what you think but until then we'll talk to you guys later bye